What's going on guys and girls? Today we're going to be quickly setting up a FileZilla FTP server on Windows 10. We're going to be using FileZilla server version 1.4, which has a brand new UI. This video is going to focus on just getting your FTP server set up and running. We won't be dealing with security certificates in this video. If you would like to increase the security of your server after getting it set up, I'm going to leave a link in the description below to my video showing how to configure your new FileZilla FTP server to run over TLS. This will create what we call an FTPS connection and is a lot better than connecting over FTP. With all of that out of the way, it's time to start installing FileZilla's FTP server. All right, so the first thing we need to do is download the server. To do this, you can go to FileZilla-project.org slash download, or you can go to google.com and type in FileZilla FTP server download. Once you get to the download page for Windows, click on the big green button that says download. The file will take a second to download, and if you need to, go ahead and click Keep in Chrome to finish downloading the file. Now we're going to begin to walk through the installer. On the first page, we're just going to agree to the license agreement. Next, we're selecting the install type. We're going to do a full installation because we want the server and the administration console. After that, we click Next and now select the destination folder. I'm going to leave mine as the default folder, which is C Program Files FileZilla Server. I also want to point out that FileZilla's server is only 20 megabytes, which is super cool. With that out of the way, it's time to hit the next button again and we're greeted with a page asking what we'd like to name our start menu folder. I always leave this as the default and just hit the next button again. On this next screen, we have a few important options. The first option is if we want the server to start automatically when Windows starts up or if we want to manually start the server. I'm going to select manual since I'm only installing this for testing purposes. Then we choose the port the admin console uses to connect to the server. I leave this as the default port. Lastly, we need to type in a password for the administration console to use. This isn't the password used to connect to the server when downloading files. This is the password used to configure the server. After that, we hit the next button and are greeted with our last set of options. I leave the default selected here. The top option tells the admin console to open every time a user logs in on the computer, and the checkbox tells the admin console to come up when the setup completes. With that, we click install and the magic happens. Now we get a little certificate pop up, we hit OK on that, and now the admin console should pop up for you. If the admin console doesn't pop up automatically, you can just click on the icon in your taskbar to bring it up. Once the admin console is up, we need to click on the button in the center of the screen to connect to the FTP server and configure it. This will open a connection screen which should be already filled out from our setup form. I'm just going to go ahead and retype my password just to be safe and hit connect. To begin configuring the server, click on server at the top and then click configure. This should open you up to the server listeners page. On this page, click add and then fill in the address as 127001 port as 21 and then choose the option with insecure plain FTP in it because that's what we're setting up for now. From here, we can configure the auto ban to ban IPs after a number of failed login attempts. I just set this to five failed attempts within 10 seconds get you a 300 second ban. Next, we're gonna be going into the groups under rights management. Here, we're gonna add a group called main2. We will give it a virtual path of slash two and a native path of C colon slash two. This will give read and write access to any user in the main two group. Now we move to the users section and add two new users. The first user we're gonna name DarkSpy and this user will require a password. We enter that password then add a new mounting point. So he gets a custom folder that he can see. We add C colon slash test as a new mounting point and give him read and write access to that folder. After adding DarkSpy, we begin to add LightSpy. This user will not require a password, just to see what that looks like. We'll also make LightSpy a member of the group main2, so she should be able to see that2 folder that comes with being a member of that group. I'm also going to add the c slash test folder under her user, so she'll be able to see both of those folders. Now that we're done here, we can ignore the rest of the options and begin attempting to connect to the server using our FileZilla FTP client. So to connect to the server, first open the FileZilla client application and click on the site manager. Add a new site connecting to 127001 using plain FTP. I'm first connecting using LightSpy without a password, and as you can see, it was over FTP, which is insecure. Thanks to the user being a part of the main two group, the user can see both the test folder and the two folder. 
Now we're gonna test connecting with DarkSpy. This user requires a password that we need to quickly put in. Once the password is in, we can simply connect and see the test folder. To copy files from the remote folder to your local drive, simply drag them from the right side of FileZilla to the left. And with that, you have successfully set up an insecure FTP server listening on port 21. This can only be accessed from your local network, but even with that, it can be pretty useful. So from here, I would definitely recommend checking out my other video that shows how to set up TLS. Once you get that set up, it's gonna show you how to connect to that computer from outside of your local network and really just get the FTP server up and running. So that's it for now, and I'll see you in the next one.